Hello there, and welcome to lesson number eight in our series on descriptive geometry, where we're going to be talking about the dihedral angle. Now, the dihedral angle is kind of fancy talk for the angle between any two given planes. Doesn't have to be a doesn't have to be a plane. It could be a plane like a horizontal or a frontal plane, or it could just be two surfaces on an object. And a surface is the same as a plane or it can be considered to be the same thing. So let's take a look at this block right here in SolidWorks that I've made for us. Um, it's just a little rectangular V-block. And what's unusual about this guy is if we look at it from a top view, you can see this cut kind of comes through at an angle like this, which presents us with a problem. How exactly can we tell what the angle between this plane and this plane is? Well, you can't exactly just go to the front view and start measuring anything because the angle is being foreshortened constantly. Um, here, if we measure the angle, it says, uh, the computer says the angle between these two lines is 70.38 degrees. And I can tell you for certain that that's not correct. In fact, if I measure actually from this plane to this plane, I should be getting 53 degrees, and that's actually what I've drawn uh, drawn that angle to be. So why is it that when you look down here and you take this angle, you come up with 70-something degrees instead of 53? Well, it's because that angle is being foreshortened. If I rotate this direction, you can see sort of that the angle gets a little bit bigger, and then it gets a little bit smaller and smaller, and it's decreasing until right about there, boom, it hits, and it turn, it's going to turn into a line. So how exactly there's two ways there's two ways that we can go about measuring the angle between two given planes one of them involves the line of intersection and the other involves getting edge views of stuff so let's talk about the easy way first and the easy way is if you had a line of intersection between two planes that was stated or was easy to get to in this case it's really easy to get to it's that line right there is a line that's common to both this plane and that plane what you can do is, if you can get a point view of that line of intersection, you're guaranteed that these two planes are going to be in edge view, and then you can take your measurement. To do so, I'll put a normal view, and we'll measure again. And this time, you'll notice that the angle between those two lines right there so that to be 70.38 degrees. That's not right. Oh, I see. It's because I know why. It's because SolidWorks. Um, it's because SolidWorks is trying to project uh, the angle measurement onto a convenient plane, which I don't want it to do right now. Um, but if you were to look at, say, the sketch. and then normal to that plane right there. You can see that that sketch lines up and that is actually your 53 degree measurement right there. So that's one way that we can go about finding a uh, finding the dihedral angle or the angle between two planes. We're not going to do we're going to do a couple of problems, but the first two I'm not actually going to do it with you. Um mainly because these problems take a really long time to do and I'm pretty much guaranteed to screw it up and I don't want to add confusion, I want to lessen confusion for you. But we are going to talk through how I did them. So here's what I started with. I started with a horizontal view of a um, like a pyramid type shape and a frontal view and I was supposed to find the dihedral angle between the plane MNO and MNS. And to help us with that we're going to move over to a pyramid type shape here. So I noticed kind of late in the game actually kind of no I noticed that there is a line of intersection given between these two planes M N O and M N S the two letters that are shared the point M is shared between these planes and N is shared between these two planes and if two points are shared between two planes then the line that connects those two points is also shared between those two planes. We go back to the model here and you can see that. These two planes intersect. This point right here is shared between this plane and this plane. And so is that point right there, shared between this plane and this plane. 
So if I connect those two points, I get the line of intersection between those two planes. So, so here, uh, so I'm going to focus on the line of intersection between the plane MNO and MNS, which is going to be the line N to M. And I want that to first be a true length line. So in order to make that line of intersection be true length, I'm going to take a view where the folding line is parallel to the line that I want in true length. So from here into auxiliary view one, now the line N to M is in true length. And now, once I have that line in true length, all I need to do is I need to rotate 90 degrees until I have a point view of that line, which if you look at, if you look at this plane, hoping my computer will, there we go. The line of intersection is in a point view right there. So now that we have this line of intersection, we're going to move through this folding line, which is perpendicular to the true length line, and that's going to give us a point view of the line end to M. And that means that we have an edge view of the plane MNO, which is M, N, O, that's that length right there, and MNS, which is that length over there. And the angle between them is 53 degrees, just like in our model over here. Um, one thing I've neglected to do that I should do is I should take each of those lengths and I should specify that they are edge views of planes. Because if I haven't said that, then my reader has no reason to believe that that's the case. I, I'm the one who has to specify that for them. So I'll go ahead and fix that for us really quick. I had, a, had an engineering professor once that used to harp on us and tell us that if you, uh, if you make quality, then you're always in demand. And it, these days I can't, seem to, uh, I can't seem to let little things go like that. I have to produce quality. All right, so that's one way to get the dihedral angle between the planes MNO and MNS. But what if you don't have a line of intersection? Or what if it's inconvenient for you to find? Well, there's a long way for us to go about it too. And that's this solution over here. Again, I started with the same thing. Uh, I started with a frontal view and a horizontal view. And here's how I went about it. It's a little bit hard to follow, so we're gonna go through kind of slow. Step one is to make a true length line because I need something to be an edge view. The, the first goal is to get something in true shape. And to get a true shape, I need an edge view of something. So I'm going to manufacture a true length line. Now, initially when I tried to do this problem before I started doing the video, I picked the line O to S because it was, I thought, oh, this is that line O to S, that's parallel to the folding line, so that means that O to S is uh, true length right here, and then I just kind of went, you know, from there. And I, I got myself all turned around. Here's why that doesn't work. The line O to S isn't on either of the planes that I'm trying to isolate. There, there is no MOS, or there's no MNS, or, um, you know, or NOS. So this line isn't part of either of those planes. So why would I why would I make that true length? I need to make an edge view out of either the plane MNO or MNS. So I picked the uh, I picked MNS. So I went from the point N over to the line MS. And then I went up to connect to MS and then reconnected N to MS. That gives us a true length line from N to MS, and that's a line that exists on the plane NSM, or the MNS in this case. Then I took my projection lines through a view, a folding line that was perpendicular to that true length line. 
and that brings us over here to auxiliary view one. Note that MNS, one of the planes that we're looking for, is in edge view now. I don't really care what's going on with the rest of this. I just brought them along for the line, had to do a little bit of a visibility check here. But the important thing that I'm focusing on is MNS is in edge view, which means now that I can take MNS and I can put it in true shape. The way that I do that is I have a folding line here that's parallel to the edge view, and that gives me MNS in true shape. Unfortunately, there's nowhere I can really put that true shape identifier that makes it clear that I'm talking about the plane MNS and not maybe MOS. Um, maybe I could do a subscript or something. That's It doesn't help us regardless. Um, but it still has to be there. Hopefully we can trust our reader enough to know that if this MNS was an edge view that I'm talking about MNS over here as being true shape. Now, once you have something in true shape, let, let's take a break from let's take a break from our example here and go and go talk about this this guy over here. Pretend for a moment that this plane right here is say MNS, and this plane over here is uh, M. What is it? MNO. So step one is first to get one of these guys to be in edge view. And if one of these if one of these guys is in edge view, then say like maybe like that right there. And we'll turn this view over here so that here's the plane, that hidden line right there, that's that's MNO. That's the other plane that we need to have an edge view on. What we need is we need to manufacture a line that's in true length so that we can force a point view of that true length line. Kind of like how in this previous example I was really harping on the whole um, intersection line between the planes MNO and MNS and that had to be in true length and then we've got a point view over here. Well, we don't have a line of intersections so we got instead a true shape and then we're going to force one of the lines in this view to be true length. <clears throat> now, again, when I was practicing this video, I messed up because I thought that I could take any point over here and just make anything be true length. So I took the line N to S and I said, great, uh, well, that's parallel with this folding line right here, so I'm going to take a view that's parallel with, uh, with N to S, and then I got off track. You have to be really careful at this step right here. This isn't a very important juncture when you're trying to find a dihedral angle. The line that's in true length must be a line that's on the other plane that you are trying to capture. So here we've got one plane, MNS, is in true shape. So I'm going to forget about MNS, and I'm going to focus solely on MNO. So I could have made a line that was, um, I could have made a true length line from, say, N to, you know, from N to O, or I could have somehow manufactured a true length line, much in the same way that I manufactured this true length line from N to this point here, by going back one view and making a parallel line. I could do the same thing over here. I could find a point and I could make a line that's parallel to this folding line and I could have it intersect with one of the edges of the plane MNO, and then that line would appear as true length. But when I stopped and thought about it long enough, I realized, oh, I was focusing on the wrong portion of this plane. Here, I was focused on N and S. I should have been focused on M and N over here, because M and N, the line M to N, is part of the plane that I'm targeting. Remember, I'm, I'm, forget, I'm forgetting about this. I've got this in true shape. I'm done with this. So I'm going to focus solely on the line M to N. And that also is automatically in true length, because these two lines are parallel with each other. So I went down and I marked M to N as being in true length. And then from there, 
all I had to do was I had to make a folding line that was perpendicular to the true length line end to end. This true shape turns back into an edge view. And this true length over here turns into a point view, giving us the MNO and MNS planes, which I marked as being an edge view. And then I was able to take the dihedral angle, which is the angle between those planes, and it's 53 degrees. Notice that both times, both methods, I came up with 53 degrees. So it doesn't actually matter how you solve the problem. Just a little bit more forethought on my part when I was trying to work through these examples before doing the video would have saved me a lot of time because I went and did this thing first and I didn't have to. But I'm glad that I did. So if you don't have a line of intersection or it's really hard to manufacture a line of intersection, get one of your planes that you're interested in to be true shape and then go back one view and try to make a line that number one is parallel with this folding line and number two starts and stops is contained by the other plane that you're trying to talk about in this case that line right there end to end is on the plane M N O that's what I want it to be in true length and then all you have to do is make another view another auxiliary view that is perpendicular to that true length line and you're guaranteed to get both planes in edge view. If you do have the line of intersection or you notice that the line of intersection is included well then you're practically golden. Just get a true length view of that line and then get a point view of that line and automatically those planes will appear as edge view and then you can take the angle between them. So I'm going to go ahead and close those guys out. And in our next example, we're going to talk about uh, finding the dihedral angle of a building. And it's going to look something like this. Okay, so for example number two in this lesson, we're going to be finding the dihedral angle between some panels on a roof, uh, A, B, and C here. Um, in order to do that, we're going to be looking for a true length line, and then we're going to look for a point view of that line. Um, I already I measured earlier uh, the angle between this line and this line right here, and I noticed that they were parallel to each other, which means if we get one of these guys in true length, we're going to have both of them in true length. And then I went ahead and I added a bunch of points around here. So when we draw this house, we're not going to copy the entire house because that's a little bit excessive. There's a lot of points that we'd have to translate, and it would end up making a lot of stuff kind of confusing. So we're only going to focus on the planes A, B, and C. And so that's, that's what I've noted around here, around its perimeter here. Okay, so... I've already made folding lines of a horizontal view and a frontal view, even though it's not specifically noted. You can kind of, if you were to picture sort of the house, this would kind of look like the front of the house if the front door was right here, and that would make this the top of the house or the horizontal view. So <clears throat> I've already noted and given us our designations for the folding lines, even though they're not specifically called out here in the drawings. This is actually kind of not the greatest example the books being a little bit lazy on us. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the construction layer which already looks like it's the case and we're going to look for perpendicularity which is right there and we're going to copy to these four points right here. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll do our lengthen and our little circle technique for identifying points, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so if this plane right here, this is B, and this line right here represents an edge view of A, and this represents an edge view of C, 
I've lined this folding line up so that it's parallel with these two lines, which means that these two lines right here will be in true length, and these are the intersections between A and B and B and C, which is what we're eventually trying to do, is we're trying to get the dihedral angle between A and B and B and C. I don't think I've shown the actual original question. That's what the original question is asking up here. So here we go. Let's, let's go just around the perimeter and we'll take A. A is coming from that projection line right there. And then let's do B. Here to here. And then let's go to C. is going to be sitting on the same point, but on this projection line here. And D will be that offset line out, and it will be on the same projection line. We'll need to lengthen that line just a little bit so that I can Offset for point E. That'll be right here. We'll offset for point F. Lastly, we need to do a point G. Offset from G to the folding line, and I'm folding that out. And that'll be right there. Let's move to the, con the object layer. We've got A is connected to B, which is connected to C, which is connected to D, which is connected to E, F, and then G, which is connected to A again. Oh, I missed that last one right there. And then there was one last thing. Point C was connected to point E. And point D was connected to point F. So point F. That missed again. There we go. Nope. We got a lot of snaps going on here that are really close to each other, so AutoCAD's kind of freaking out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and delete all of these guys here. And now we'll start copying some text over. A, B, and C.
mentioned that these two lines right here were going to be in true length. So we'll go ahead and mark those as true length lines. And we'll do that one up going here. And then we'll copy another one right there. Perfect. And the last thing to do was go around and copy these points all the way. I should be G. Okay. Uh, phase one complete. Our next move is where we need to get just this shape into edge view. So we have all of these things in edge view. We will uh, build ourselves some room by shortening up that projection, that folding line. I'm sorry, not projection line. And then I'll move this guy through here. Um, and then, ooh, one last thing that we should do is I should shorten the projection lines. And there we go. Okay, we're going to use Lay MCUR for layer make current, and we're going to make the folding line layer the current layer. And then we need a folding line that is perpendicular to that true length line right there. I'll go ahead and pick it up, and I'll, I'll just place that down here. Extend that a little bit that way, that way. And we'll need some identifying, some identifying letters for that. So let's. That is going to be auxiliary V1. This will be auxiliary V2. back to the construction line layer using layer make current and I'll go ahead and make some projection lines. Hopefully this doesn't look like complete chaos but there's a chance it might. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and I'll lengthen this one more time. Here we go. All right, I think we're ready. Uh, here's the view I want to make. So I'll go two views back. So all my offsetting is going to be happening from this view right here. So let's offset for points A and B here to here and then offset this. Uh, points A and B are going to be here and here so let's go ahead and extend up to this folding line the projection line for A and B is going to be here. And there. Then Next, let's do C and D. Offset for C and D 
to the projection line. Out we go. C and D are going to be the here and here, so we'll extend again to that folding line. Point E is going to be sitting right on top of that guy right there. And that makes sense. We should be getting a point V of E and C. And F and B is going to be s probably sitting right on top of each other as well. Let's go ahead and confirm that. So the offset from F to the folding line from here to here, yep, puts us right there. So F and B are going to be sitting on top of each other. But G also is going to be down here. So, let's extend to this folding line the projection for G, and there we are. <coughs> we'll move to the object layer, and then I'm going to connect up A to B point C D and then what happens after that it looks like D goes back to E then back to F and then F goes to G so this line should be all the way across here okay those folding lines those can there. And now we can pick up some text. So we're going to click on that. Turn off my O snaps and I'll go. Uh, I get a point view, which means that I've got an edge view of everything. So I'm going to copy some more text one to here, here, and here. Edge view, edge view, and edge view. edge view of B and this will be an edge view of plain numbers or plain letter C. Perfect. Okay, this is G A B comma F. comma E and D. And we are ready to do some cleanup. one that doesn't have an edge or a point, you know, a little pinpoint. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to add a little cross to that guy. One. Actually, let's make it two. That's a little bit easier to see.
and it looks like we're ready to measure angles. This is one of the few times we're going to be reporting back an actual value. So I'm going to use the angle measurement, and the angle between the edge view of A and B is this angle right here. It looks to be 128 degrees. And then we'll report the angle between here and here which is another 128 degrees. So there you have it. That's the dihedral angles for by the roof planes A and B, and B and C as well. Um, it makes sense that if these these two planes must be parallel, and that's, uh, that's shown right here, it makes sense that the dihedral angles should be the same in both cases, and we've demonstrated that right here. So here's how we went about and did that. We uh, we did a projection aligning this to uh, one of the intersection lines between B and A, B and C, to get a true length line. And then we did another folding line that was perpendicular to one of those true length lines, both of them actually, and that gave us a point view of each of those lines, an edge view of the planes that we were interested in, and then we could measure those angles, and that is the dihedral angle. Again, in the 3D model, that looks something like this. So if I have that plane turned on and I look normal to that plane, that's where I can measure that dihedral angle. And that's going to end lesson number eight. Alright everybody, I'll see you next time.